since my mom told me that she felt very unfulfilled for not taking up a choice career as a secretary because my father didn't want her to, I decided I was going to make my own choices and create my own path. So unlike other kids who depended on their parents and advisors for what to study in the university, I felt I was going to do something that would be comfortable for me. And so the search began. I never want to be on call at night, so becoming a medical doctor was out of it. Neither do I want to have to take care of animals. My first choice was pharmacy. Pharmacy because growing up, I used to wonder how a chalk-like material could make people well. But when I couldn't get into study pharmacy, I figured that the next thing would be biochemistry. Because back in high school, I enjoyed that combo biology and chemistry, so I was like, yay, biochemistry, and I put in for it. Towards the end of my final year, I began to consider community service. And so I organized training programs for undergraduates in skill acquisition. Of course, I had several skills, from baking to knitting to sewing to hair making. I was all over the place. So we publicized it, and people began to enroll. One beautiful Saturday morning, I got this call from a well-respected woman in my university who is, although a lecturer in a different department. She said she wanted me to train her on cardigan making. And I was really excited and honored. So not long after, she parked the car right in front of my hostel, walked into my small room, and sat on my bed. It felt super exciting. So at the end of the training, she looked at me and said, so what do you want to do with biochemistry after you graduate? And I was completely lost. I'd never given it a thought. So I said, um, I haven't figured it out yet. And she was like, OK, so why don't you think about doing something in line with agriculture? And I was like, agriculture? I had ruled that out a long time ago. I quickly remembered how back then in high school, we had the school farm, and we would go very early in the morning to do the wetting and weeding of the vegetables. Even in the afternoon, we had to peep through the classroom window to be sure that there was nobody stealing the vegetables. I don't want to go through all that anymore. <laughs> so she smiled and looked at me more closely and was like, you see, I'm a microbiologist, but I also help women farmers get rid of mycotoxins in their products. You can give it a second thought. And I did just that. So what could I possibly do with biochemistry? And then I thought about developing alternatives to the currently used pesticides. This is so much needed because in developing countries, including Nigeria, where I come from, farmers are mostly uneducated in rural areas. And so they find it very difficult to follow the instructions on pesticide labels, especially when there's an outbreak of a disease or a pest, they end up spraying indiscriminately. And of course, this has implications for both health and the environment. So I decided to do some more research, and I found out that about 40% of cowpeas is lost as a result of insect pest attack and storage. Farmers lose, they lose a, a huge portion of their profit as a result. So I decided to design a pet project in this line. And so, on one occasion, working with my mentor, a professor of botany, I saw that in that community, you know, people planted herbs and shrubs around their homes. I initially thought they were just for decorative purposes until I asked, and then they said, oh, this one kills malaria, um, this one prevents measles, this takes care of leprosy. So I pointed to the lemongrass, and they said, oh, that one, repels reptiles, snakes and the likes. I felt really fascinated, wow, if it could actually repel reptiles, it might be able to get rid of smaller insects like weevils. So I decided to do some work on the plants in the laboratory. When I put in for my masters, it became a lot clearer, and I formed a team of four, and we began to see what we could do with the plants. We tried a number of things, including blending the leaves and then treating infested beans with it. Of course, that did not work, because instead of the, the weevils dying, they were actually healthy and stronger. <laughs> of course, it was a medicinal plant. What did we expect? <laughs> OK, so I thought, let's try something else. What about extracting the bioactive components of the plants? 
And that was what we did. We had the option of using solvents like ethanol and exane, which we did. The result was good, but I wasn't so comfortable with the idea of solvents because it meant that the solvent had some impact on the result and not just the plant. So I thought of going for a distillation process using water. And we did that and obtained the distillate. So we treated infested beans with uh, different doses of the distillate. And we obtained about 100% weevil mortality in just one hour of exposure. That was fantastic for us. So we thought about it. If it could actually get rid of the weevils, how about the eggs? And so we designed another group where we didn't have the weevils, but beans with the eggs on them. So we treated that with the distillate and then incubated for some days, after which we checked. And alas, the eggs didn't hatch into adults. So that means that our distillate had 100% weevil and egg mortality within one hour of exposure. So that felt really exciting for us. And then I thought about it. How about strengthening the effect of the distillate? So I thought of incorporating some other botanicals like a high soap, lime and orange peels, you know, through the same process. And that really worked. So we needed a second opinion. And then we sent samples to a public analyst and to the Stored Product Research Institute. They gave us fantastic results and they were really excited. Oh, this works so well. We've not been having something like this. We've not had combos in the past and this is really good. So because we were excited by the results, we decided to do large scale testings, you know, get it across to the farmers who need them. On one occasion, working with the farmers, we located a particular community in Lagelu local government area where we have beans, maize, and rice farmers. Of course, they had problems with weevils. And then we got them and said, hello, we're scientists. We have a product we'd like for you to test. Give us your feedback. You might even want to purchase from us later on. And you know, they were really excited to associate with us. So they brought out their infested uh, beans and then sprayed the formulated product for about five minutes, covered it, and then allowed it to air dry for another five minutes. They were really amazed by the results. And in fact, it had a sweet lemony smell, unlike the regular pesticides. So I realized that this solution, of course, is, alter is an alternative that could work anywhere in the world. When I saw the smile on their faces and how excited they were at the solution, I realized that in the end, what actually suits me is what benefits others. With biopesticides, the currently over 1.2 million organic farmers that we have worldwide can worry less about insect attacks and even do away completely with pesticides. Of course, more organic farmers will be able to come on board. Thank you. <laughs>